two of the most popular compact premium SUVs fight it out. The all-new BMW X1 against the Audi Q3. Here in Article Free with Thomas for you in 4K, full screen and full length. Let's go with the all-new generation of the BMW X1. You can see here this really large double kidney here in the front, vertical fins, adaptive air intake and on-demand. New headlamps here. These are also the adaptive LED lamps, nice modern signature. And this is also the M Sport model. So you have this sporty design kit in the lower part. Whereas with the Audi Q3, we have this typical Audi single frame grille, really large three-dimensional Audi rings. They are more and more going away from that now. We will see that in the Q8 e-tron episode. Headlamps here, these are also the LED ones and a very modern styling. So this is not the all new model then, but still has a quite modern appeal, definitely. This is, by the way, Navara blue, this color here, rather darker blue, but also very beautiful. Whereas we have a little bit brighter one. You could maybe move it also in the blue direction or maybe gray or something in between. Here it is called at the BMW Storm Bay Metallic. Turning indicators in the front, I think both cool, right? Here with a segmented look in the Audi and here also with the you know two spans here. I think both cool, isn't it? W which one do you like better? Side comparison, the length 4 meters 50 or 177 inches for the BMW X1 and the Q3 almost the same. It's just about two centimeters difference, so more or less the same length, very same segment. Here we have 18 inch wheels for the BMW X1, winter tires. Of course, there would be bigger ones available. Overall for both vehicles, from 17 to 20 inch are available. The Q3 here has 19 inch for the day, so in that respect, it looks a little bit cooler, of course. Both are available with adaptive suspension, that's an option. And the main design difference is actually here that the Audi Q3 has a little more dynamic stance in the way that the C pillar is standing here upright, whereas with the BMW X1, it more looks, you know, in the traditional shape. Then, of course, with both vehicles, there are this SUV coupe versions available. It's the BMW X2 for the X1 here in the new generation. There will also be soon a video here on Autogafu if you stay subscribed. And for the Q3, it's the Q3 Sportback. We also have a separate video of that one on our channel. And as for the electric vehicle versions, there's the all-new BMW iX1. There's also a review of that on Autogafur. And here with the Q3, the correspondent model would be the Q4 e-tron. Interesting is that that's a totally different platform for the Audi, but the same platform for the BMWs. So different technology approaches right there. And as for the all-wheel drive system, both platforms are front-wheel driven platforms. So that means when it's an all-wheel drive, like we have here today with both vehicles, it's front plus rear on demand. The question then in the driving part is, how much front wheel bias is there? Or is it not that significant? Is there a big difference between the vehicles? This will be super interesting in the driving part later on. Car designs are becoming more alike. Well, here in this case, I think it's good that they do differentiate, whereas we have with the Audi Q3 here, this you know flatter design here of the rear windshield, although this is the SUV and not the Sportback version here. And then this like textile tail lamp signature. Contrasting lower part, this one by the way here, the advanced trim level. The S line would be the very corresponding trim level to the M Sport, but it's always hard to get 100% comparable vehicles. This is the best we could get for you. And then here in the rear of the X1, new generation, three-dimensional tail lamp design, and here a more you know upright design actually. So I think it's good that they differentiate in that way. And then the M Sport adds this black contrast in the lower part. And what about the Audi Gefühl fake exhaust police? <laughs> the AFAP alert. Well, with the X1, no problem at all. Very clean and honest design. But the Q3 sets it all the way in for fake exhaust. And the turning indicator comparison? Yeah, definitely one by the Audi. Just more beautiful integration here. Here with the BMW, I don't get it. It's such a beautiful three-dimensional tail lamp design here. And then this turning indicator in, on the inside. Mm, moving towards the interior. Key fobs first. Here the BMW one looks more modern. The Q3 really has this super old-school key fob, but... Well, doesn't always have disadvantage with something is old school, but the BMW one looks cool and is also lighter indeed. Then the BMW here first, flush door handles, you can see they're integrated. And then 
they open like this, still give you good feedback and door closing sound is not the best we've heard, um, honestly. Then interior here, this is an option, the sensor tech cover here, a high grade leather red inside, looks great, great build quality, softer touch than even for your elbow. And then this is also in the M Sport model, as I said, that is connected to the interior and we also have these sportier seats right here. They steadily come, by the way, with Alcantara on the inside, leather red outside. Even in the US, Alcantara is now available. And these here are the full sensor tech, full leather red seats here with perforation. Looks great, great material quality, soft seat cushion as well, also in the lower part. So great offerings they have there. Base fabric seats would also be available, but this one, of course, then would be the seat for the US especially. But I mean, when you're in the US and can finally also get some Alcantara seats, um, why not try them? Because so far, manufacturers said, yeah, yeah, you know, our US customers, they don't want Alcantara because it's, hey, US customers are spilling drinks all over the place all the time, then they need to clean the seats and wipe them. Why not offer Alcantara for the customer? I'm sure there are a lot of US customers who are very diligent with their vehicles like you because that's the reason also you're here on the channel we are all kind through this so alcantara for the us finally that's a great idea then seating position super comfortable indeed very soft great quality nice seating position all suv you need here we have a manual control of the steering wheel up and down in and out so yeah that's making a very very good impression it will get a little bit tough for the Q3 today, what the X1 is doing in this new generation here. Interior overview here with the BMW X1, new generation, really revolutionary change in this new generation. Screen is one curved unit and then split into 10.25 and 10.7. Beautiful integration also of the ambient lighting underneath the screen and also here towards then the other door and so on. So cool ambient lighting feature, definitely. Zoom on this for the infotainment. Well, the climate unit is here inside, no separate climate unit. That is one difference also to the Q3 for sure. You get used to it a little bit, definitely. It stays in the same area at least. Air vents are here then. And the steering wheel also with the real buttons. So that's easy to control here, for example, also for the volume. Cool design of the steering wheel, isn't it? And in the lower part, this is also very interesting. The smartphone has like a seat belt here to fix it against the inductive charging pad. It's a great idea. The only thing is now with the new iPhones, uh, sometimes it does activate then the Apple Pay system and then uh, there's the credit card appearing in the smartphone by the seatbelt holder. Hmm, okay. <laughs> and then what's interesting here behind, there are like some openings and they suck away hot air from the inductive charging heat. That is a cool feature for sure. Infotainment system has this main menu and yeah, that's kind of information overload. And then this main menu, so the OS8 here has become more complicated, definitely. The car internal GPS also works, it's actually very well usable indeed. Other than that, you rather go to the Apple CarPlay menu and the integration of the CarPlay and the Android Auto, it's more stable now, wireless connection. So, so far before that it was sometimes, you know, lacking the connection. Sometimes it does happen that when you play music, it sometimes stops for a second, but you know, seldom and not as much as before. And here the optional Harman Kardon sound system is awesome. It's really superb, it delivers a great true in-depth surround sound. I really love that. So OS 8, more complicated, but more reliable and quicker. So it has pros and cons indeed. On the live vehicle view, there you see consumption figures. And this is here with a lot of city consumption and also in winter times. Um, this is the rather high figure. It can also be as low as seven liters or 100 kilometers. Digital instruments, like a screensaver, but then I turn on the vehicle, looks like this. And you can pick different modes then for that. Here, either change the content where something is appearing. I rather prefer this setting with the digital speed in the middle actually and then you can also change the whole layout for example to this or to this um, yeah this would be my favorite one here and then you can see rpms turn up and the cool thing is here when you're in the apple carplay in the bmw os8 here when you have apple maps you can also send it to the left side of the instruments that's an exclusive feature with Android Auto, it would also work then with the Google Maps. And here in the new X1, we also have a nice head-up display. 
cup holders are sadly not adaptive, so bottles fly all over the place. And then here, two USB-C chargers. Here on this flying middle console, this is the My Mode selector where you can pick the driving modes. Good that we still have a normal volume jog. Really nice to have that. And this, this integrated shifting lever here, forward for reverse, this for D or the S shifting mode, zoom more about that. Then start, stop engine button here. And when you press this button, then you fold up this armrest. There's some space underneath indeed. And this whole concept of the flying middle console, because here underneath, you can see we have more space here, a lot of space actually. And the whole design concept taken from the big EV SUV, the BMW iX. As for the rear seating area here, instead of the doors, it's hardback, but the nice structure at least, and also great design from the Harman Kardon sound system is an option. Then you can take a look here at the interior, also with the black perforated sensor tech. Really good in the quality, so the overall build quality impression here of the new BMW X1 is really excellent, I have to say. And yeah, where we're, as we've seen that with Mercedes vehicles in the new generation, sometimes the build quality, like in C-Class, is worse than the predecessor. Here with the BMW models, they have really stepped up the game. Then here, legroom with this hard recess here in the back. There is still some headroom, uh, legroom left and also headroom, yes. Um, here in the rear, 189 or 6 foot 2, it's possible. Although this one is also the one with a nice panoramic view. And um, yeah, it's actually quite decently comfortable here. The rear bench can also be uh, slid forward or back. 13 centimeters or 5 inches if you have one of the pure combustion engine versions. It's not possible in the PHEV or in the IX one. And also in the middle seat you can sit for a shorter period of time. A little bit blocking in here with the knees for sure, um, but it works for, let's say, emergency situations. And then you have two USB-C chargers here in the rear and this one here, cup holders, decently built and also with some adaptive rubber lips. Now the Q3 rear seating area. Yeah, these beautiful gray fabric seats, they bring more light to the interior. I really like this styling here indeed. And also in the rear with the nice Alcantara or microfiber accentuations right there. So everything looks really straight, clean and upright. Also hard pack at the inside of the doors. Let's see as for the leg room, this is a little bit tighter. There's also the recess here for the, for the knees, but the way I'm driving in the front, it is definitely tighter with the knees than in the X1. Headroom, well, there is some left, but hardly comparable in this case because the X1 is the one with the panoramic roof. Here, this very vehicle is not specced with it. Um, it works as well, not too much difference. And if you would go for the Sportback version, it also falls down. But um, the comfort here is also decent. Um, but Definitely this uh, segment where the X1 is winning it, also here with the middle tunnel and so on. So the X1 definitely better suitable for space and people in the rear. That's also a decent result here overall. Then we have to also two USB-C chargers here in the lower part. In the middle part, how's the comfort there? Mm, yeah, he's also okay and the same problem than with the knees on the inside and the armors here in the middle is also adaptive good build quality and here well they're a little bit smaller definitely so depends on the drink size if that's an advantage or disadvantage towards the interior of the audi here a classic door handle so not flush but both have uh, you know can be touched for real so it's actually both both fine i think door closing sound yeah, it's definitely better with the Audi here in this case. However, insert material of the door. This one you see a rather hard pack. Was cooler with the sensor tech cover in the BMW, but here is nice here with the microfiber cover of the inside of the doors here. And this is a very nice trim indeed, because look at that. Here, these gray fabric seats, they are really beautiful. So fabric is also available in the UK market, for example. And then we have in this case in here, microfiber at the outside, so beautiful. Fabric, microfiber, leatherette mix, so also animal free seats, and yeah, great styling here in this brighter styling. Lower part here can also be made a little bit longer than for longer legs. And then the steering wheel here, this one is the non sporty steering wheel, the base one, but looks actually quite clean as well. And real buttons here also on the steering wheel, that's also cool. And then about the seating position, this one, the one without panoramic roof, so it's not that well to compare. Uh, with the headroom here, and of course, we have more headroom with 189 or 602. 
also a very nice and comfortable seating position. Uh, I feel I sit a little bit lower, so the X1 more gives me this SUV driving position, whereas the Q3 then in comparison more gives a crossover driving position. And then here, steam in and out, up and down, but both are comfortable. But seating wise, from the first impression, mm, yeah, I think the X1 seats from the ergonomic deliver a little bit more, and that's quite rare. So most of the time, when we compare BMW and Audi, um, especially in sedans, for example, then Audi were always better as for the ergonomics. But here, one of the very first and rare cases where the BMW seats were actually uh, make a better impression. Yeah, that's quite astonishing. Very interesting, by the way, here, these door handles from the inside are kind of like upside down than you used to. Um, but I think it's a good solution because when you grab them, this is actually more intuitive in that way than the other way around. So I think well played Audi. Interior cockpit overview of the Audi. Also very clean, a very timeless layout, I think. It would usually start with 10.25 inch on the left, but this is the optional 12.3 inch virtual cockpit, so a bigger one then. And here it would also start 8.8 .8 smaller, and this is then the 10.1 inch in comparison to the X1. The instruments are larger in the Audi, but the infotainment system is larger in the BMW. Interesting, isn't it? Zoom out this to that. Here, microfiber cover on top of that. That's a beautiful solution here. Quattro batching. Top part here is somewhat soft touch. And then the main difference is here, we still have a manual climate unit with nice clicking sounds. This is what I do prefer. So that is one key element in the interior that is better with the Audi, I think. Also manual volume knob. And the drive mode select is also a little bit easier because you still have a real button here, which you can also switch through. And then um, it also, you know, see here, it switches through. You don't have to press then in the infotainment system. You can also stay at the lower part, for example. Then here we have a real big shifting lever. Do you prefer these real shifting levers or do you prefer the more smaller integrated one that look maybe uh, cleaner, but don't offer, you know, this big uh, haptic feedback or don't you care? Um, please tell me your comments about that. And then we have here cup holders. They are also adaptive. This is really nice and you know that in the X1 they were not adaptive, so the cup holder solution is better in the Audi. And this armrest here is properly attached with some space underneath, but the BMW offers more interior space in the middle console because of that flying concept. And you also have two USB-C charger in the front, and this is here also the inductive charging pad without vents and without a seat belt. <laughs> Oh, and the automatic handbrake here is not standard. It's like a blindfold button. Really? Infotainment system, I think it's quite easily done. So um, look at that. It's a good view here with this app view. You know what you get. Car menu here, for example. You can also go to the drive select here for the driving modes, but you can also rule it from below, as I've shown to you. Then the car internal GPS. This is, by the way, Google satellite view, but it's not Google Maps. So not to uh, confuse it with that, actually. And actually also quite uh, responsive. So overall, I also like the infotainment system here. This in the CarPlay integration looks a little bit more impressive with the BMW and the sound system. This one here is a base one that doesn't come up with the um, one in the X1, but you can also get you know, a more elaborate one here. Um, yeah, but overall, the BMW Harman Kardon system is a better choice. Yeah, I really like the Audi virtual cockpit here, these digital instruments. You can switch the middle view, for example, here also then with the map, but only the car internal map actually is uh, possible here. That's also different than to the BMW. And you can also have this view, for example, but you can also change the whole layout, either the classic view and sport, they're kind of similar. And this dynamic view, this one is actually uh, completely different in the look. You look at that, this is, not, you know, related to any classic gauges or something, but um, I feel the other ones just look more cooler, more classic indeed. Or what do you think? Trunk comparison. It's 530 liters for the Audi, 540 liters for the X1. So it sounds like more capacity, but what about the measurements? Let's start here with the all new model, the X1. You can see here, cabin trolley fits in easily upright also. And then the length here is, like 85 centimeters or 34 inches, a little bit shorter than the Q3, I can already tell you right here. And the width, a good meter of 40 inches. And this, the bench here fold from the inside, not from the trunk here. It's like one, one, one split. So 
individualize it in total length 166 or 65 inches. Here you can see you don't lose much height right here because of this upright styling here. And then when we move over to the Audi, it's very interesting because we have indeed a little bit more length here at 88 centimeters or 35 inches. So the BMW was ending right here. So that's actually quite good. Width is also about a meter or 40 inches. But the thing is that because it's kind of like chopped off here, this is where we lose the leader figure then in comparison to the BMW. And the length, Let's see, to the seat as I would be driving. Is that comparable? A little bit longer than 186 or 66 inches. And here this seems to be like a two-third, one-third split, but you can see here the middle part can also be fold down individually here in the Audi as well. Engines will start with a very interesting fact about the engine bay. Here with the BMW X1, there is this rubber lip here in the lower part and it goes all the way around right here. And then when the hood is closed, everything stays super clean inside. Look at that, this has been driven in winter here now. Wow, really amazing. And here also on the top part, look at that. Another one. So the engine is super well protected against dust and uh, you know mud and so on. And we really had an effort <laughs> cleaning this engine bay of the Audi because there's nothing you know like this there just here at the top part, this one, and then here you can have this lip here, but it's a smaller one, and then the sides here stay open, and that is actually causing then more mud and everything in the engine bay. Yeah, curious fact, definitely. As for the engine lineup, 2-liter diesel for both, 4-cylinder, and then 1.5 or 2-liter petrol engines, whereas the 1.5 is a 3-cylinder with the BMW, it's also a 4-cylinder here with the Audi. And the comparable engines for today are the 2-liter 4-cylinder petrol engines, the 40 TFSI for the Q3, and the 23i for the X1 would be the 28i in the US with a little bit higher horsepower tune and about 6 seconds in the acceleration figure, but here the 23i and also the 40 TFSI both around 7 seconds in the acceleration figure. Let's drive them. Welcome to Thomas's Comparison Driving Lounge, BMW X1 versus Audi Q3. We're starting with the X1 23i, would be the 28i in the US, then with a higher horsepower tune. Seven seconds is the official acceleration figure for this one, approximately seven seconds. We put to the Sport Dynamic Mode and also to the S Shifting Mode. Sport here set up, we do rolling start from 40 kilometers an hour. Let's go. Was through 175. We'll cut it there because it's in front of us. Now we can accelerate through. It was a pretty nice sound, right? So for that four cylinder engine, of course, a little bit, a little bit of an enhancement, but actually felt and heard quite natural. Really nice indeed. Gives you a good feeling when driving the vehicle. And wow, so stable here on the motorway. And um, the, this adaptive amp suspension we have in here, when we are in that sporty mode, we have a little bit more feedback then of the suspension. Wow, what a settled feeling here on the German Autobahn. Let's see if I go to the normal personal mode. Yeah, suspension is a little bit more forgiving. It's a good setup, but at the same time, it's not like shaking up too much or anything. Very nice lane changes. Whoa, and the turning indicators are so much fun. You know, either with this tipping, or you can also really hammer them in like BAM! And do you hear that? BAM! BAM! I, there's no one behind me, so I'm not confusing anyone here at the moment. Wow! That feels so lovely. So you always want to use the turning indicators all the way because it just resonates so well with the vehicle. And that's one, really, one of the coolest things in this vehicle. It really reminds us of vintage BMWs they, that they give you an analog feeling really like you put something in with a, with some force you know like you would turn it yeah the AC unit is all digital in the screen now that's one of the things I, I am missing 
if you're one of these guys, 22 degrees Celsius or like 72 degrees Fahrenheit, AC on, automatic mode, and you don't care at all. But me personally, I tend to change it here, back and there, AC on, AC on, and, and so on. So yeah, I like to have a separate control right there. The S-shifting mode, by the way, is controlling how far the RPMs are turned up. I can also leave it in normal D driving mode. And then I can always at any time use the pin down. There's also something coming, but there is a difference. For example, when I'm in the S-shifting mode, the car is already usually a gear lower or something. And the gears are turned higher. And what you can also do is use the shifting pedals here, shift down manual or up manual, and hold it to go back then. And interesting, especially when you're in this D mode, when you press and hold the left pedal, you get in the sports boost mode, and when you hold it a little bit longer, yeah, anyway, I have about 10 seconds in that sport boost mode, but yeah, it doesn't really make a large difference. Yeah, not really. The engine feels quick enough. Yes, I would go for the 2 liter 4 cylinder engine if possible on your market. You know that UK markets always are a little bit limited as for the BMW choices they are offering there. That's a pity, definitely. In the US, you don't have another choice um, anyway, then. And also get this higher horsepower tune, which isn't bad at all because it gives you a second quicker in acceleration, definitely. So, when you think about buying vehicles, try to get high displacement, low horsepower, so the engine is not under stress. So, this downsizing hasn't been. Oh, there's an interesting styling for that Golf 5. Yeah, was it 5 or 6? 5, right? Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that was an interesting first uh, motorway sequence. Um, the second one is to follow right now. The cool thing about this vehicle is really when I'm here like in a city situation, stuck in traffic or something, then it feels small enough and there is no limit as for the sides and so on. You get through narrow areas and so on. But at the same time, it also feels at home on the German Autobahn, on the motorway. This is the thing about the BMW X1. It can do everything. It is a good compromise of everything, actually. It has a very you know, right-sized approach. Steering wheel, by the way, you know that from recent BMW steering feelings, I expect that it would be a little bit more natural. It's not bad at all or something. It also feels sporty and crisp in a way, but not that naturally progressive, you know? So here at lower speeds, it's actually quite okay. Let's see also if there is a difference in the driving mode. That's the personal mode, you know. Once again, the sport mode. It should be. Now people behind me are starting to wonder if I'm drunk. Um, little, yeah, a little bit of difference, but not too much as I would expect, actually. And to me, the thing is, like, the faster we drive, then this area here gets a little bit dead. So this is already where I can say that the Audi is doing a better job because they have a very good natural feeling progressive input for their steerings. That's what Audi can do best actually. Suspension wise, the adaptive M suspension is doing a great job. 18 inch window tires on, so they are also giving me a softer experience. And yeah, it's, it's a very, very good suspension definitely. And it gives you, once again, both sportiness and also comfort. And here the ambient lighting, for such a rather small vehicle segment, compact to premium SUVs, lovely ambient lighting. You can see that here in the tunnel, that is indeed awesome. And you don't always have to go in the dynamic mode. It also takes time to switch. For example, you can just use the S shifting mode. So when I accelerate out, then I also have good acceleration. See it here, and 150 already. And I think that is, rather the use case because these personal modes um, yeah especially because you have to switch them in the screen then you know activate it with the button and switch them in the screen a little bit too complicated to do it while driving I think so rather use the S shifting mode when you want a little bit more boost or stay in a normal D driving mode and then use the shifting pads yourself or something so that would also be an approach noise insulation also good here so reasonable noise ins insulation at higher speeds and really astonished how settled and planted this 
vehicle feels you on the road even at higher speeds gives you so much confidence and control it's just a lovely ride absolutely right size yeah, also for this m steering wheel it's a great driving experience and yeah i can tell you it will be tough for the audi here in this new generation they refined this car even more and although it's a front wheel driven platform you don't feel much front wheel bias that was also another important point i wanted to make even though in the acceleration this one here being the x drive version then you have front plus rear drive on demand there are also in Europe, for example, versions available without the X-Drive. And it's actually not too bad. Of course, a rear-wheel driven BMW is always something really special and emotional and you know, giving the agility out of the corners. However, here the advantage is it's a rather light platform and that means that it has good dynamic handling in the corners. Not necessarily when accelerating out, but you know, just like here, for example, now nine degrees right turn just feels lovely and when I accelerate out yeah with this X drive here it's getting quite spontaneous power also to the rear axle and there's not a notable front wheel bias or something I think that's something they managed very well this is also something I'm really looking forward if this is different than any Audi because there the compact platform follows the same principle and also you know basically has front wheel bias but do we feel that a little bit more in the Audi? That will be very exciting indeed. As for assistance systems, of course, they're mainly used for the motorway. You can have here the assisted driving. But I sometimes, in these vehicle tests, you tend to test them also on the countryside road because it is even tougher for the car to do that. The Autobahn, very straight lines and so on. And here, for example, the right line is kind of great, great out. You can hardly see it, but at the same time, the vehicle is really keeping it very well in the lane and also in a very smooth way. Look at that, how refined that assistance system is. That's awesome indeed. And here is still managing that bend here and also not too hectic from a steering movement. So very well done. I'm not sure if you've seen the blind spot monitor. We haven't been overtaken so many times, but then it's flashing here in the side mirror. So, wow. I mean, besides, that the steering could give you a little bit more feeling. It's not as bad as in the 3 Series, by the way. So all the BMW SUVs actually have better steering feeling than the 3 Series. Um, sadly, we have to say, wow, now the sun is really blinding here. Um, yeah, so overall, I can easily live with that steering here. Again, maybe in an in a update, they will listen to my feedback. Um, I already, already told you um, once before in an X1 review that the intention behind that was actually that the car feels even quicker and more agile when the steering is light. That's what the engineer told me. That was the, like, they did that intentionally. And I said, like, hey, like, isn't a BMW customer more appreciating this natural steering input? I mean, it doesn't have to be super hard to steer. Audi shows how that works, not hard to steer, at the same time giving you a direct sporty natural input so it is actually possible yeah but maybe a um, bmw can also because that's actually all software tuned then nowadays as well as most things are actually software tuned but hardware wise from driving this vehicle wow this is already super convincing here in the overall segment it's really so much fun to drive it and you know drive, driving the most expensive one not the biggest one um, of the BMW lineup, not the biggest one of the SUV lineup. It already gives you so much, actually. Still not cheap at all, of course. Then the question is, one of our toughest tests here, hunting this one here up the narrow bends. Here we go, once again in the sport mode and the S shifting mode. Let's see about that. And also, is there any front wheel bias now in these tight corners? This will be very exciting. Yeah, it is fun to see here, definitely. Yeah, very well done. No slip or something. Of course, here in the woods, it's always a little bit more moist than on the tarmac. Let's see, now I have to turn the steering in. Wow, wow. Amazing indeed. So much grip and confidence and 
can't believe that. That doesn't feel front wheel biased at all. This drives on rails. What the? Amazing. And yeah, it, again, it is a lot of fun to steer still, you know? So this, um, uh, you know, criticism about more natural feeling is, it's okay, you know? It could be a little bit better, but just on a very high level, you know? This is so amazing handling-wise. Does the Audi Q3 have anything against it? Let's see. All right, now to the Audi Q3. You go to the S-shifting mode and the dynamic mode. And also do an acceleration onto the motorway. Let's see, from 50 here. but feels slower than it actually is. Here also with the adaptive suspension, lane change, very nicely done also. Very good feeling in that steering. You feel you sit a little bit lower. Uh, once in a while I said also in the interior part, more crossover feeling than SUV driving feeling. So the X7 feels actually larger and bigger, higher, more SUV-ish indeed. Also really good control here over the whole vehicle. We have 19 inch wheels mounted here, so a little bit larger than in the X1. However, this is not all of the difference we feel actually. So I feel that the suspension is in a way more forgiving with the X1. So I think the adaptive suspension of the X1 is doing a better job. So this one inch is not everything indeed. And also when we switch back to the comfort or normal auto mode and go back to the normal D shifting mode. The suspension here just feels stiffer and the X1 feels like it evens out everything. This is also a good suspension here, especially in here with the adaptive function. Yes, however, the X1 suspension just feels so superb that in comparison to the X1, the Audi Q3 suspension feels somewhat weak, but that's just in direct comparison. If you compare this one here to maybe some other non-premium vehicles or in general saying like, hey, this, this is a great drive. It drives very, very well, yes. But the X1 now in a direct comparison is so well done as for the driving characteristics, especially suspension. Wow, I'm impressed indeed. That's really superb. Oh, nicely um, quattro illumination there. Here when we're in the tunnel now and I can very well see the climbing unit. Yeah, that's the thing. Controlling the AC unit, AC unit while driving is just better in the Audi. Um, the engine here, by the way, just felt a little bit more annoyed when pushing it. The X1 was more sovereign, more relaxed. And also when you're just, just doing like this pin down, sound-wise, the X1 just feels more pleasing. This engine here, it just always feels like, ah, do you really have to do it with me? And the X1 engine is like, yeah, sure, you can do that, no problem. Although they are not so different in power. Yes, the BMW has a little bit more horsepower. Um, but then again, the excavation figures also don't differ that much. It's the same displacement figure, same cylinder count and so on. So yeah, the BMW engine just seems just seems better tuned and overall better as for the setup and also as for the transmission. S Tronic here, dual clutch transmission with the Audi and it feels sometimes, in, once again, in comparison to the BMW, a little bit too hectic, I would say. Um, there again, the BMW just feels more refined. And this is really something here, you know, when I'm in an Audi Q3 in this compact SUV, premium compact SUV segment, and I say that another vehicle feels way more refined. That is an astonishing finding here, indeed. So the Audi Q3 has always been one of my favorite vehicles here in, in this segment, definitely. And for example, also because of the steering input. That's actually the best and it's also better than in the X1. So precise, no dead zone area. It's progressive. You don't have to steer that much. At the same time, it is sporty. Yes, look at that. Sporty and comfortable at the same time. 
It is the perfect steering setup and it can't be any better than that, I think. This is definitely better with the Audi um, yeah, and the AC unit while, while driving. But the rest, you know, like engine, transmission, suspension, that one is really better with the X1. Seating comfort here and so on is good with both, definitely. Um, and I'm absolutely happy and satisfied with the seating comfort here in the Audi Q3. However, once again, because the X1 is so good also in that respect, these new seats here, soft touch sensor tech also, or then when you go with the microfiber as well, guys, relax everyone. It's like, just be when someone is not driving, like for one second, directly using the horn, like, come on. I mean, when someone doesn't react like after like 10 seconds, it's okay, but you know what? Yeah, people should be just more relaxed on the road. Once again, one more time in the tunnel, they can see how the, all the lighting features are here. And then let me through again to the dynamic mode. Then it also automatically changes here to the S shifting mode. It's really cool. And I also have these sport gauges here, I really like them. Yeah, this just gives such a good control of the vehicle. So the steering is really, yeah, steering wise, I would always go then here for the Audi. But the rest is really leaning towards the BMW at this moment. So let me do one more acceleration here when we're already at speed. And let's see. And I also, okay, the Spence is going first. You better drive it fast. One more time, 92. Fifty. Ah, nicely in this corner here. Yeah. 170, that's enough for now. Yeah, it feels really settled on the road as well, but wow. I wouldn't have imagined how big the difference is from the BMW suspension to the Audi one. Once again, the Audi suspension is good. But I really have to say, never had such a superb suspension here in a compact premium SUV like with the BMW X1 really wouldn't have imagined that the X1 is so much better in driving besides maybe the steering where the Audi leads a little bit yeah super astonishing but I mean both vehicles are very suitable I feel the BMW X1 was also a little bit more silent here in the motorway or what do you guys think yeah I think here I have to raise my voice a little bit higher when driving at high speeds so the BMW in this case then seems more silent and that also fits to the overall picture I mean yes the Audi Q3 is a little bit older here in this comparison but still, that is not the crucial thing, you know. Um, recently we had Mercedes C-Class with Audi A4, and there I went for the Audi A4 because of the easier user interface, just more connected feeling to the car. Um, although the C-Class has a lot of technology features to offer, so you know, um, sometimes the older car can be still the better one because it still does something better, you know, and it's maybe more, you know, in an evolutionary sense more evolved. Indeed, um, yeah, but here the X1 wins the Autobahn. But let's see, what about countryside driving here and the fast corners? And also, what about the front wheel bias here? We can find out more about that in these tight corners then. Yeah, you see what I mean? It's like this. And sometimes the shifting up is like in the X1, everything is smoother actually. Also, while shifting and so on. Um, again, not, not that it would be bad here or something, but the X1 is just smooth in, in this respect there. So, I mean, exterior wise, you can really, yeah, personal preference, interior wise, has some advantages here. Both are really nice in the in interior, and seats are also really great. What I really like about the X1 is also that you have this true SUV seating position here. It's also good, yes, but it doesn't feel that much SUV, uh, you know, like the X1. Here now, assistance systems, pretty on the same road, cruise control, adaptive one, and then also with active lane keeping assist. Let's see, this is now a critical situation because the road is making a right hand turn and it's more meant for autobahn driving. But as I said, I usually put the cars here no. Okay. There also the BMW did a better job actually in keeping the car in the lane. Here I had to intervene earlier. So also the assistance systems, they are good here, but seem to be also a step further than with the BMW. Yeah. Wow. Really interesting indeed. 
So now I'm looking forward. The X1, we didn't feel the front rear bias at all, basically. This one here is also overdrive. And also the system front plus rear on demand. But how do we feel that then in the tight corners? So one more time, dynamic mode here, and also the shifting mode that is activated by that. Tight corners, housed with the front wheel bias, also with the suspension mates here a little bit rougher. Yeah, wow, it's way rougher, the suspension. Yes, size of the tires is a little bit wider, but that's not all, as I said. And then here, out of the corners, yeah, that's incredible, right? A little bit of wheel spin in the front, and indeed, more understeering believe that the difference is so large wouldn't have expected that but here steering is really good but I don't you, you feel you know really very well in control in general you know but considering and also here the now transmission and engine performance the X1 drove here up so extremely smooth on and on rails and the X uh, the Q3 here also did a great job but it was so much better in the X1. Also so astonishing. And once again, this is talking on a high level here. The Q3 does it does it in a very nice way and so on, you know. But here also then the engine, it just feels a little bit more stressed once again. You know what I mean? And going back to the normal auto driving mode here. Yeah, this is really something. So um, I was thinking at first, yes, I liked the X1 from the beginning, but I thought that you know, like the classic AC layout and the great steering would actually tend me towards the Q3. But driving-wise now, this goes clearly to the X1 indeed. But what about the overall result? Because we also have to take pricing into account. Which one would I take home? Well, it's a very interesting question because both of these compact premium SUVs are to me one of the best there are and they are so well usable for everything. They are the right sized one in a way of not too large for the city but already grown up for the autobahn. So both are great vehicles, no doubt about that. And I really like the Audi Q3. I mean exterior wise it's more a question of you know matter of preference. I think both are very nice in the styling. I like the X1 from the front a little bit more. In the side profile, uh, in the rear, I like the Audi a little bit more. So overall, I would take both as for the exterior styling, no doubt about that. Interior, I think also both are very well designed, very clean layout. What I like with the Audi definitely is that we still have this manual AC unit, so easy to control. And also the steering input, in, uh, you know, that is also cooler with the Audi indeed. But then again, the X1 interior also looks very clean. Yes, it misses the AC unit, the separate one, but more or less you also get along with it, um, you know, over the time. Interesting is that the Audi seats are very good, but the X1 seats are so exceptionally good indeed, and also more material choice, especially this perforated sensor tech, now also with Alcantara for the US market and so on. So high class premium seats without animal content so well done bmw here but we also had very nice seats here with the audi today um, so you see where this is going actually the audi is a very good vehicle and I, could, I would still recommend it but the bmw x1 is topping it in most of the aspects not in all but most also here more leg room with the bmw that is also another crucial aspect here on the interior part but then driving wise I was starting this review off with saying like, yeah, the X1 is more modern, but maybe at the end of the day, I would still go with the Audi because I like the more conservative setup with the AC unit and I love this Audi steering input feels so natural and progressive. But then I was totally surprised by how good the BMW X1 is in this new generation. Again, this one drives so well. But the X1 drives so much more exceptionally well. I haven't, you know, imagined that. Just when you drive them directly after each other, then you feel like the suspension, transmission, engine is so smooth with the X1. It's just such, such a smooth and flawless driving experience. Whereas in this comparison, the Audi then feels a little bit more stressed out from the transmission, not so smooth from the engine and so on sound-wise and how it acts and with the RPM and so on. 
And you wouldn't really feel that much when you drive it individually and compare it maybe against other competitors. But when you compare it to this one here, yeah, I'm really impressed of how good the all new X1 is. So when you get this one here for a decent price, I can still recommend it, no doubt. But at the very same price, no doubt I would always go for the X1 now. And yeah, that was that this came as a surprise that it's so clear. However, pricing wise, it's very interesting as well. These are highly spec vehicles, yes. This one here today is a little bit higher spec, for example, also panoramic roof, um, the adaptive uh, LED headlamps. Yes, the wheels are a little bit larger with the Audi here, um, but this one here has some more options. But then again, the Audi is a little bit less expensive and the very vehicle spec here, 59,000 euros for the Audi Q3, 40 TSI advanced. And here, 66,000 for the BMW X1 23i. M Sport. So 7,000 euros difference, then you also start thinking maybe a little bit, yes. So it always also depends on the individual trim and also the individual offer you get at your dealer. Um, so when there's a large price difference, you might also want to say, hey, I'm also satisfied with the Audi. Yeah, but we have to say this comparison overall then goes to the BMW X1 as the winner. What do you say? What would you pick? Audi or BMW, Q3 or X1? Tell me in the comments, join in discussion and also tune in for more super interesting comparison episodes right now.